person uh, that um, who see or will see for is here. And I'm also happy, I was looking at the program and realizing that there was quite a number of people that made presentations here. And I would like to say um, to Lebu, thank you very much to you and South African Black Entrepreneurship uh, Entrepreneurs Forum, uh, South Africans, Bafuna Imputubo, Jemo Basekshi when I'm found. Bafuna Imputubo, and my view is that Leo Imputubo, Leo, it cannot be brought in by one side of our society or of our country. Leo Imputubo, Eskulubangayo, Imputubo, which has to be brought in first and foremost by government, ensuring that we build the proper infrastructure in the township. Infrastructure is cutting a sling. You can see all these big construction companies almost everywhere. A centin, actually, almost every corner of centin. You can see that Kunama building irons are going up. One of the things that I keep asking, and which I think, Lebu, you must take and follow up on this one. Every time I see the building coming up, I see the little board that explains the architecture, the developer, the this and that. And every time I look at those boards, I am yet to see some black African architects being there. I'm yet to see developers being there. I'm yet to see uh, the quantity surveyors and all that. You must take interest in that, because for me, that's what tells you where the economy of South Africa sits. If we can't simplify it to that point, then it's going to take us a long time to really understand what we are talking about when we say we want black people to find themselves in the mainstream economy of South Africa. Now, that's just in the construction industry and the buildings that we see everywhere and the roads that are being built. As I was coming through here, I saw that there's a lot of uh, road construction that is happening here itself. And I know that this is an old plan that was put together uh, quite a while back that the infrastructure of the township must improve. Now, as I drive out of here again, I will go and see who is the one that is doing the construction there. Because maybe you might find that the only people who are doing the construction, it's us, we are doing the digging. And then the others are sitting in nice offices and putting the plans together and doing everything. This is what we call radical economic transformation. I don't know why people want to make it complicated and still questioning us, what is it about? I don't understand why, instead of focusing on this is radical economic transformation, what do we need to change and make sure that the economy of South Africa is shared amongst all South Africans. We never said we are going to come in and say radical economic transformation and go around grabbing people's things anyway. I don't think we did that. Even in 1994 when we were negotiating, we put up front that public uh, private property is going to be protected and I think we haven't done anything of grabbing this and that, as we've seen in other countries. I mean, if you go to Angola, you go to uh, 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 Mozambique, you know what happened when Frelimo was taking over. You know what happened when in Angola they were taking over. A lot of the people who had owned the economy at the time had to pack their bags and go back to Portugal, go back to France, go back to wherever. In South Africa, we said no. As the Freedom Charter says, South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white. And that, as the president said yesterday, I hope those who were listening to the president yesterday when he was answering his questions, one of the, the members of parliament there made noise the previous day to say that the president hates white people. And the president made it very clear yesterday that I do not hate white people. I wouldn't have been part and parcel of building a democracy that was still accepting that South Africa belongs to, to all who live in it. All he said was, one of the things that cannot be accepted, that cannot be condoned, that cannot be forgotten, is the fact that majority of black people were denied the opportunities which are being introduced to them today. And 23 years of democracy, of trying to change that, is a very short time. What is clear to us is that 
we were very uh, uh, frank and we were very uh, uh, welcoming and we were very everything, we were very democratic. We focused on creating a conducive political environment in South Africa. That environment is wow. there and we must guard it with everything that we have because we cannot reverse democracy. Democracy is a cornerstone of what South Africa lives on. What we need to do is to say, it's fine, now the democracy is there, but can we look at the economic side? Because when somebody stood up there to speak about the issue of land, that he got a piece of land, but he's got challenges, he can't do what he wants to do, somebody has to step up and help him. It's not only Standard Bank or the banks that have to help him, in fact, when he was talking about the infrastructure, the bulk infrastructure, I immediately thought to myself, I think the bulk infrastructure belongs to government. It is the, the local structure that is supposed to be responsible for that because if we were to leave it to everybody to be responsible for the bulk infrastructure, I think we would have chaos uh, uh, in the country. So the ones who are down here who said they were going to help you, the bulk infrastructure, it's got to be done uh, by uh, the local structure. But it's not only just the local structure. Government decided as a matter of course and as a matter of principle that we must focus on infrastructure development in township and in rural areas. Because you know, you remember that Soweto for those who grew up here, Soweto was just a reserve for people to sleep there, wake up in the morning, go somewhere to go and work. Now, government then decided that needs to be changed because it's not sustainable for people of Soweto or any other township to be viewed as a reserve where they have to travel long distances, spend the little money that they have on transport plus meals wherever they are. So government took a decision that part of the nine-point plan that we have, it's the infrastructure development of the township and rural areas. Now, when government says um, uh, infrastructure development is part of what we need to do, and you saw and you see outside, it's very difficult to get here because there is something that is happening out there. There's huge uh, pipes that you can see. It's clear that infrastructure development is happening there. What we need to ask ourselves, who are the people that were given the opportunity to do that infrastructure development? Number two, if it so happens that they turn around and they say, no, but your people don't have the capacity to do exactly the same, it means, Labantu Basegurulen, who were talking here, you see, somebody sitting this side is saying, we are from Egurulen. Somebody is sitting that side and saying, I'm from Egurulen, but Egurulen people are not here. What does that say to me? It says there's no talking to each other. If you don't talk to each other, if you don't unite, if you don't find each other and say, what are the opportunities that are there? How can we pull our resources together in order for us to take advantage of that? As black people, we will never be able to get anywhere. One of the important things that we need to do is really to be able to talk to each other. And I think the reason why Lebu and everybody brought us here and brought yourselves here is that because there's got to be a conversation. But the conversation must not be between the people who are sitting this side, who are presenting, and yourselves that side, you are not having the conversation. The conversation also has to be those exhibitors who were out there. The exhibitors must be able to talk to each other so that you don't find a situation which I always used to complain about when I was a, 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 a member of the provincial legislature in 1994, 95, 96. I used to ask myself the question, you know, when you go out on the street, you find uh, informal business and you find Abu Mama, Babege Amat Amat, about 50 little plates, 50 plates of tomato, 50 plates of uh, a banana, 50 plates and whatever. And you can see that all of them are sitting there looking after that 50 plates of tomatoes. And I used to say to myself, I wonder, wouldn't it work better? if they were to have a conversation and say, let's space less here, say to, let's space less. What is it that we can do to come together so that not every day 
we all wake up and sit here and watch these 50 plates of tomatoes. If maybe, if maybe as government also, because government needs to support you in that. Government has to make sure that it builds the infrastructure for you in the city centre or wherever we are selling, even here in Soweto itself. Isn't it possible that people can always be talking to each other? So that one time, Omunye Umama Mayesedi, Epis Etenisa, Omunye Usekaya Wenza something. Then afterwards, afternoon, Lobega Tenisa, we are Keta Naye, we are Hamba, we are Kaya, Bashinti Sani, but working together. I know when I had this conversation with enough cork quite a while back. Uh, Lawrence Mavudla was the time when Lawrence Mavudla was the one who used to run around the streets of Johannesburg and trying to mobilize the informal businesses. When I had the conversation with him, he said, no, but Minister, you know, Abanta Batemban, Umta Gazuti, Magu Figelo, Wazo Tala, Wate Nisa, and then Mag Habalo, Ebuyalo, Le Mali Bazo Wazina, Uguti, Batemban, Uguti, Le Mali Bazo Ishera then. That's the reason why you then have the Department of Small Business Development, which has got special programs that are meant to assist, to train people to understand how they can run their businesses, to understand how they can uh, 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 save the money, to understand how they can go and buy in bulk, to understand a whole lot of things. And it's not only the department that is really helping our people in the understanding of running your businesses. They go and them, we have to work hand in hand. There's a Gauteng Enterprise Propeller. We have to work with each other so that the, the, the kind of support that we are giving to small and medium enterprises also, we avoid the working in isolation because this is what is happening. Sometimes people don't know where to go. Must they call me and the department, CIDA or CIFA, or must they call the Gauteng uh, Enterprise Propeller, or must they go to the local structure? Sometimes they get confused. We are now trying to get our act together as government, particularly under the Department of Small Business Development, to say, let us package the support that we give in a way that there's no wastage uh, in between. Let us make sure that when you have CEDA and CIFA who have how many, 50 something offices um, throughout the country, let when people want to come and find support, let them not go to CIFA, to CEDA, to SARS, to whatever, spending very little money that they don't have. Can we have a conversation about how can we make sure that we develop your one-stop shop where people can be able to go to one place and be able to get all the information in one place. Because the other challenge that we have is that we talk a lot about technology. We talk a lot about the fact that some people can register on the internet and so forth. We tend to forget again that here in the township, when you talk about people accessing that information through the internet and so forth, data is expensive. That's why we support those who say data must fall. Data must fall. And I know that when we say so from the government side that data must fall, they say no, but it's your responsibility to make sure that data must fall. Yes, it is true. It's our responsibility. But we need more and more of the voices within government itself. And especially for small and medium enterprises, we're very clear, Tina, as a department, in order for people to be able to communicate, the communication must be cheap. But also, we need to have a conversation with your, your Vodacom, your Celsi, your all those people. And we are in conversation with them because we are saying to them, look, even yourselves as Vodacom, as Celsi, as whatever, if you reduce the price of the data, you are enabling more and more people to access information, to improve on their businesses. And when you do so, it means those that are improving their businesses, they will also have more and more people who have got jobs, who are then going to end up buying the airtime at the end of the day. So uh, I'm really happy that we are here again. I mean, it, I think it's the second time that we are here. And as a department, we are three years um, uh, in office. I also want to say to you, there's something that is very interesting that government is, has, has now pushed and we have pushed as a Department of Small Business Development together with CEDA and SIVA, that is the, the public sector procurement. 
30% set aside program and transversal agreements that we are, we, are, we, are, we are pushing with the department. Now the issue is here. Government says 30% procurement. Our responsibility is to say where is that 30% in all where the procurement has to be done. Our responsibility is then to communicate with you to say, just as an example, each department yam, it must ensure that 30% procurement of anything that we need in the department, whether it's toilet paper, whether it's pens, whether it's uh, uh, any services that are needed, we have to make sure that 30% of that is bought from your small and medium enterprises, particularly black. Now, we know that we have a challenge, that there is a there's a central place where you have to register and do all that. Many people fail because they don't have the information as to how do they register themselves in that database. And I think it's one of the things, Lebu, that as we continue in this partnership, we need to look at how are we going to popularize this entire thing of 30% procurement. Are uh, our small and medium enterprises going to be ready for that 30% um, uh, pro procurement? We also know uh, as a department that most small and medium enterprises have got a problem of access to finance. And I think Sifa, have you spoken already? Oh, not yet. So, so I leave that to him uh, to explain. But I would also like to say that government decided to make small and medium enterprises to be one of the key areas for government. So we have a nine-point plan that deals with different uh, issues, including the one of intra infrastructure development. Small and medium enterprises are also one of the nine. So if small and medium enterprises and informal business are one of the nine, it therefore enables us as a department to be elevated to that level of priority uh, by government. And so I believe that uh, when we come to places like this, we are wanting to say to you, Please be assured that small and medium enterprises are a priority for, for government. And small and medium enterprises and cooperatives are a priority for government simply because government has realized and recognized that. If you look at the economies of the African continent, if you look at the economies of the world, it is the world that is saying to us, small and medium enterprises are the backbone of many economies. Small and medium enterprises, particularly in the African continent, are where most jobs are created. So I don't think that government would ignore something as important as that, because the big companies, they've been there, done that. Innovation and creativity will come uh, from small and, and medium enterprises. So I think that partnership, a uh, public-private partnership, is also very important, and I thank um, Standard Bank for, for, for sponsoring here, because part of sponsoring is part of your public-private enterprise, public enterprise, public-private <coughs> partnership. Black people don't have the money, Standard Bank. Black people just don't have the money. That's a fact. <laughs> and so, so, so when, when people say CIFA is losing so much money, uh, any F is losing so much money. It's true. We need to create systems that will make sure that the money doesn't go to wrong things. But we cannot use that as a basis of we can't increase the budget because they're losing a lot of money. We cannot forget the fact that we are a developmental state. Yesterday in Parliament, we were having a discussion. Uh, somebody stood up and defended you, the banks, and said, yeah, you must understand, you know, these are commercial banks. Uh, they need to get their money bank back. But uh, uh, as, a, as, as a result, what's the point of being a commercial bank when you can't get your money back? Nobody said commercial banks must just come to the street of Soweto and have a million and say each, each person in Soweto hears a rent. No, we understand that when you are commercial banks, you want your return. However, considering the history of South Africa, considering the more than 300 years or more 
where black people were completely and utterly removed from the mainstream economy. I'm 100% sure that had that not been the case, we could be owning Standard Bank. And there wouldn't even be a discussion about who owns it, who are, because the competition for owning or for building, for growing, would have been open for everybody. Anyone who would have been crying, they would have been crying because they did not have the capacity, but the environment would have been created for them to do so. So, Standard Bank, everybody, there has to be an understanding that we didn't create Soweto. We didn't want Soweto to be as bad as it is. We didn't want our rural areas to be far flung and be backward as they are. We didn't want to do that. But deliberately, there was a system that said, you are this color, you don't belong here, and you're not going to be able to do these things. And so all I'm saying to the private sector, while we appreciate that you need to make the money because we are a capitalist country, there's no socialism here. We understand that the capitalist mode of production is this, but we are saying to you, under normal circumstances, we could have had a, 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 a capitalist mode of production, but you would have had black people competing among themselves fairly and squarely. Now we have people who are sitting here who have to compete. Compete with other people who have been given that opportunity over and above you, 100%, more than 100 years. Yes. And as strong Obuti, No, no, we never said we're just gonna pick, 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 and nah, -uh. we also want to work. Hence, the government must create a conducive environment for you to work. However, the private sector needs to understand that while they need to make the money, they also need to understand that we have to address the imbalances of the past. One of the reasons why the ANC as a government, we've always had this thing of radical economic transformation. We took the decision a long time ago. The problem was talking about it, pushing it, forcing it, and making it happen. That's what was happening. And now we are saying, enough is enough. It's time it happened. So let us not be pushed into a corner when we say we're talking about radical economic transformation, they say, you know, when you say radical economic transformation, they say radical economic transformation equal corruption. Can't be. It's not true. The majority of us who wake up in the morning to go and serve the people of South Africa, I can guarantee you, the majority of us, we wake up to do that. However, we can't deny, we can't deny the fact that somewhere along the line, you will find rotten apples here and there. So what do we want to do now? You take all of us and you lump us into one box and you, you cite us like that. When we start telling you that we need this radical economic transformation to happen, you then block us by saying, no, 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 you're wanting it to do it for yourselves. We're not wanting to do it for ourselves. We're wanting to do it for the majority of South Africans who are black, who were never given the opportunity. It's time we opened up that opportunity. And I wish to thank the province, thank Klebu, and thank everybody that is putting an effort. The negative narrative that is prevailing in South Africa is not helpful to black people. Because the bottom line is this is what we are doing. We wake up in the morning, there's this story. We chase that story. We wake up in the morning, there's that story. We chase that story. Hold us accountable, yes. Stop us when we are doing corruption. Go report us when we are doing corruption. But do not be diverted from the real issue. The real issue, the real issue is we are chasing wind when the people who actually owned this economy all these years they actually are benefiting better than they did in the past. Yes. And all we are doing is what? Scratching each other on our faces instead of confronting the real challenge that faces South Africa. The real challenge is here, is poverty, unemployment, and inequality. We are, not going to, we are not going to deal with that issue if we are going to look at Takana as the CEO of CIFA. And all you do when you see him simply because maybe something small happened that didn't go right. Then you pay, take a brush and you say, corrupt. <laughs> if you have it, put it on the table, take it to the police, 
take it to the relevant structures so that we stop generalizing. And corruption does, cannot have a, a black face anyway, because corruption, there's a giver and a taker. Let's deal with both. Let's deal with the taker, let's deal with the giver. That's the only way that we can take our country forward. Because me, when I travel to Botswana, Lesotho, and Swaziland, and so forth, and, and, and Nigeria, and everywhere, I find black people are in charge of the economy there. Yeah. When they show you a building, they say, a man comes in, or a woman, and says, this is my building. Tina, where are you, our buildings? The house is here? You call that that's your building? Guys, uh, comrades and friends, let's wake up to reality.